everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I am having a really good friend over for dinner and I'm so excited because sous chef Nina is gonna be doing some sous chefing. But I thought I would do like a little half day vlog since I'm gonna be doing all the things. And um, on days like today, it's like two o'clock right now, um, what I really like doing is kind of doing like a little beauty stuff while I'm cooking. And I started oiling my hair. I did this side already and I'm gonna do this side, but I like just doing it um, for like a couple hours because I know I'm gonna like shower and everything before I get ready. But after I oil it, first I like massaging it in, oops, um, do that. And I also really like to like kind of twist it in because I feel like it just holds better. I don't know if that's just me. Maybe it's something I learned as a kid because I feel like we would always put oil in our hair and like do braids and sadly, I am not a very good braider, so I just feel like, I'm like, okay, twists, twists should work, right? Comment below with how you oil your hair. Do you leave it in? Do you sleep in it overnight? What really works for you? Because I feel like people have routines that they swear by and I want to know the things. So let me know. I'm going to head to the kitchen and start the sushi. I'm starting with dessert today and I am making a peach cobbler and I think it's always like fun to do like more fruity desserts, but I am just excited because I love hosting and it's actually really fun for me to cook. I've always loved it. And I think I started like really loving cooking and hosting and understanding what it really meant in sixth grade. I took my first home ec class. We all had to take home ec in sixth grade. And honestly, before this home ec class, I didn't even understand like preheating the oven, which I don't know if that's really sad. If anyone else was in the same boat, let me know. But if I was making cookies, I would push like 375 degrees and then just push start and then put the cookies in. Like I would just never preheat the oven. <laughs> Needless to say, the cookies were not great. So I just learned proper things that you probably should know by this age. And I remember our final assignment was we had to make like one dish for our family. And I was like, I'm not gonna make one dish. I'm gonna make a whole meal. And I made like monkey bread and I made chicken and I made, oh, no baked peanut butter cookies and banana bread. And clearly I had basically just had like a whole dessert menu. So I'm a sweet tooth girl, if you couldn't already tell. This recipe I actually got from my cousin. The first time I had it was in the summer during COVID. And it was like the first time we like sat outdoors and got to like see family. And she made this amazing peach cobbler. And I was like, oh my gosh, where did you get this? And she said she made it. And it is a vegan recipe. It's from uh, Nora Cooks is uh, the site that we got it off of. And you can make it vegan. And my mom's vegan. I made it for my mom for her birthday two weeks ago. And it was a huge hit for vegans and non-vegans alike. And basically it's butter, sugar, and peaches. And that's kind of it. So I'm just soaking the peaches that I cut in, in sugar and cornstarch. And I have these super cute little ramekins that I'm gonna put it in, but I have to make the, the filling, the topping first. Now that I'm finally settled into my home, my new place in New York, I'm so excited to have guests over again because it's just, it's just a really fun way to um, get to know people, share a meal. I definitely learned the baking soda lesson the hard way because going back to this sixth grade baking class, it was banana bread day and we were all making banana bread and we would work in teams of like five. And we forgot to add in the baking soda for our banana bread. And so the next day, because we didn't see it until the next day because it takes like an hour to bake, which was too short of time in that class period. And the next day, basically our entire banana bread was totally flat. And our teacher said, you know, you can still eat it. It should still taste fine. But this is like the number one mistake is not adding baking powder or baking soda. And so from that day onwards, every time I'm baking, I have never, ever, ever forgotten baking powder or baking soda because of that banana bread incident. So yeah. All right, this is a topping. Oh, I forgot the sugar. I forgot the sugar. Uh, I was like, I know something's missing. And then we put it in the little in the little dishes to bake it. Okay, these are the little coquettes that I have. They are so, so cute. 
and like such a hit. There is just something so satisfying about having your own little dessert. Like you know it's yours, no one else is gonna share, there's no messy cutting involved, and it's like delicious. And I just put these and bake them in and then I put a little ice cream on top and it makes you feel like a kid again, just like very homemade, which I guess it is homemade, but just it's just it's just fun. Food should be fun. We'll crumble a little bit of the topping, um, basically to cover the peaches. And that's it. I pop this in the oven for 375 and they're gonna be delicious little desserts. We'll definitely do a taste test when it's done. Don't worry. I am also gonna be making some Indian masala corn, the one with like the chopped masala, but I'm actually gonna put it into the air fryer. My brother-in-law yesterday, I went over to like find some chopped masala. I was like, do you have any of this? As I was like rummaging through their pantry. We live like seven minutes away. And he said, have you ever tried putting the corn in the air fryer? And I said, no. And he said, oh my gosh, it's actually really good. So Baran, we're going to give it a try. 370, 10 to 12 minutes. We're going to find out. We are doing Thai food tonight. So I'm going to add some noodles. That was messy. I am eyeballing this for sure. This is definitely the mom's way of doing it. I am so excited to try the Diaspora Chili Powder. I love this brand and I feel like everything they do is just so yummy. So I can't wait. Okay, got a better handle on it. Yeah, I think that's good. Corn is baking. We got our dessert ready. And the noodles look just right. I already made a Thai peanut sauce for this and I'm just going to reheat the sauce. It's super easy. Update on the corn. It has been 16 minutes now since I've put it in and it doesn't seem to like really be doing much yet. I just put it in for an additional four minutes. So it's getting there, but it's taking much longer than I thought. So I just thought I would report back this important discovery of air frying corn. <laughs> On the days I do um, my oil, I use the Briogeo Scalp Revival uh, because it kind of feels just like a minty feeling for your scalp, if I'm being honest. Um, so I really like it because I feel like I exfoliate, cleanse, hydrate, everything you can do for your scalp to keep it healthy, which I've recently gotten into the scalp game and I'm noticing a difference, I really am. Anyway, so today I don't have the energy to do anything. Like today is not the day. That's actually not true. I have the energy, but I don't have the energy to do my hair. And so on days like today, I'm actually only just gonna do, make the effort to do like the front part. And with curly hair, you want it to be sopping wet. I mean, like sopping wet. I have to reorganize all of that. So I'm going to be using the Dew. This is my favorite um, mousse right now at the moment. It's what my stylist turned me on to. Shout out to Steven. And he always says, just break it through and shake it out, shake it, shake it, shake it, and kind of let it fall. Um, but I'm honestly, I'm just gonna do the front pieces and then I'm just gonna put it up into a little twist situation. This is the dinner outfit look. You know, it's comfy, it's easy, and still feels nice. Okay, just so you guys know, I am sous chefing. There is another chef in the kitchen. This is what we did when we were kids, is that you take the wine and you would rub it all over, and then you would add in like the masala mixture and rub it into the, the corn. You guys, this hits the spot. It is so good and it was so easy. I will say it took probably 22 minutes in the air fryer, but it's like a really nice golden brown. It tastes amazing and it was super easy. Yay, I can't wait to serve it. Okay, I have not moved at all and <laughs> I've just finished my corn. So it was that good. Jeej, you were right. The air fryer was a really solid move. Let me know if you try these little corns in the air fryer. This is kind of the color that you get, but let me know how it turns out and if you like it. Okay, I have to go get ready. <laughs> I've lately just been taking gloss and like kind of smudging it into my lip liner line and it actually turns out really pretty and feels just a little more natural. I put my hair up in a little claw clip. Okay, we're gonna have to go finish up all the dinner things.